This is the Earth Science Class and welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Earth as a System playlist and looking at what is the geosphere. If you're new to the channel, this is the place where we discuss everything to do with how the Earth works, all different subjects, disciplines, and we describe different topics in each video. And this one is all about the geosphere, so let's get going. So as discussed in previous videos, the Earth is a very large interconnected system of different components and sections working together concurrently to form our living planet. Now that goes for everything to do with the atmosphere and the sun's radiation, energy, how we use the energy within our planet, how the Earth was formed and constructed, different layers looking at all these different things from hydrology and the hydrosphere to how animals and life have flourished on this planet with different chemical and physical components that allow this to happen. And one major part, obviously, is the geosphere. Now, the geosphere, in very simple terms, is the physical solid Earth that we live on. Now, we live on a massive rock of different layers, compositions, densities and thicknesses but the earth itself is a big rock so when students go why do we care about geology why do we do other sciences instead of geology i'm always saying this is the basis you know the the other sciences the classic sciences of physics chemistry biology they all work off the foundation of it being on earth and earth is a massive rock so the the idea of geology being that foundational science is exactly correct and without that knowledge of geology or how the geosphere functions or its processes the application to chemistry biology and physics and things like engineering are going to be lacking because you don't understand the the earth science part of it so it's a cumulative subject. It is composed of many different disciplines, including hydrology and oceanography and everything that's on or inside the earth, both under the ground internally and on the surface, and the processes that affect both internal systems and systems that function on the Earth's surface. And as we know, for the past 4.6 billion years, the Earth has been an ever-changing, ever-fluctuating body of, of processes that have continuously adapted to either a cooling planet from the original form when it was first created and formed, this ever-changing world has created what we know as our landscapes and our deserts, our mountains, our oceans, our rivers, lakes. Everything we know on the Earth's surface has been a product of physical, biological, chemical processes that are acting on the Earth over short term or micro scales up to a very large macro scales of billions of years. So it's very important to understand these changes, both temporal and both physical and both location, because you can dis discuss very small changes in a local area and then compare to very large changes on a continental or even a hemisphere size examples things like tectonics. So we can break down these processes that are made up the geosphere. Now, geo is Greek for the Earth, and sphere, again, is a word that is uh, Latin Greek derivative or origin, which means realm or region or zone. So looking at the physical rock zone, we can break this down into two sections, the endogenic and the exogenic. So the endogenic is anything that is to do with the internal processes of the Earth, Earth's layers, the rocks, the geology and the minerals, uh, crystallography, process that formed from magma into solid rocks. So looking at the rock cycle, the igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, looking at the Earth's core, relative decay and accretion from the Earth's formed, geologic history, History and how the Earth's history has changed on the form and function of its layers, the mantle, convection currents, uh, various heat processes and, and mantle plumes, and this results in rising heat and material through different layers of the asthenosphere into the lithosphere, and obviously the crust is the outcome or the product of this internal movement and release of heat over time, and how the core, outer core, is changing with the Earth's magnetic field and the iron and nickel moving around in a large sphere like a massive laundry machine 
and how it's creating the EM field. So as an opposite side of this or a connected part, we have the exogenic process of the geosphere. This is the processes that are affecting the Earth's surface and right above it. So right in that first layer of the atmosphere, troposphere, that's going to affect and influence the surface of the Earth. So looking at weather and erosion is a big part, climate, weather, uh, difference in heating, uh, looking at different soils and landscapes and albedo, looking at different compositions of the Earth's crust from oceanic crust to continental crust and the effects of the internal system on the surface. So looking at plate tectonics. Continental drift, looking at orogeny and mountain building, looking at rift zones and rift valleys and divergent plate boundaries, and how this is going to result in what's called geomorphology, the shape and form of the Earth due to natural Earth science processes that we can look at in more detail. So the beauty of looking at the geosphere in more detail is one word, geology, is the study of the Earth and how this can break down into many different components and subjects and disciplines that really lay the foundation foundation to everything in science that we can look at both chemically and physically and biologically. So petrology is a study of all different kinds of rocks, you know, the rock cycle and the three main types of rocks that we do in middle school and high school. They can branch off into geophysics. Geophysics can lead into plate tectonics and mantle convection, and that can lead into two things, volcanoes and earthquakes. The movement and sudden disturbance of the crust can cause either release of magma or the release of energy through different seismic waves and earthquakes. And we can also look at the petrology leading into the history of the Earth and looking at rock history and dating and see how old rocks are and then it'll tell you which rocks are formed where and how they end up and why, let's say, there's a layer of of cemetery rock on top of Everest because Everest was once part of an ocean floor between the incoming Indian subcontinent and the Asian continent, how they smashed together through convergent plate boundary and formed the lovely Himalayan mountains and the Tibetan plateau and that large system of orogeny. So looking at also how these rocks are formed through minerals and elements and atoms, looking at geochemistry in great detail. So this lays the foundation of all sciences going forward, especially in high school and into college. This geology discipline is very, very important for all students as their journey in science begins. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.